Everybody, welcome back to the Air Softology Monday Q&A show. The show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also has an unhealthy addiction to coffee mugs. Actually, I picked this one up in Osaka, Japan. If you guys don't know, I'm not like total geek. Well, I'm a geek. All right, let's just face it. I mean, come on, I got like Django Fett back here. Anyway, um, I have been a big fan of Cowboy Bebop, and they're doing 20th anniversary. God, I feel old. Anyway, it's Ein Road Cup, so it's like a bunch of little baby corgis and Einstein there. If you guys know, Einstein was the spur moment to get my corgi Chloe, and anyway, kind of chain reaction from there. Anyway, long story short, welcome back to the show. Uh, no coffee in there today. I, uh, I'm, I'm switching to water, trying to be healthy after this long weekend. I just finished MOA show 2018. It was organized, coordinated by QRF Magazine here in Taiwan. Wow. What a show. So many cool things. I've got footage coming from all of the booths and kind of like a tour. I got all the cool stuff. So stay tuned here. That's going to be coming in the next week or so. I'm going to start dropping that. I'm going to one tour video before it, but I got a bunch of stuff. It's going to be pretty neat. There's a lot of cool stuff. Oh, man. And I want to tease. You guys see that? Oh, this is coming. This is kind of like a preview. Not a full review, but a preview review. Unboxing. It is dropping this week. I want you guys to know, I, I want to guess. I want you to guess what this is. This is like, as far as I know, I should have the, if things are right, I should be like one of the first videos up on this and, and probably one of the first English speaking ones on that. I'm not going to tell you what's in the box, but I want you to guess in the comment section below. Also, if it's your first time here, remember, whoa, who clapped. If it's your first time here, I'm such a dork. Remember, your questions go in the comment section below. Vote up those favorites. Also, recommend your favorite YouTube channels. Also, help support the show and the channel. I got a web store and I sell patches like these tactical corgis here, the tactical Shiba. This is a freebie. Uh, you can buy it too. But if you spend uh, 10 bucks or more in the store till the end of the year, we've got the, uh, the free Christmas classic. Tech to Corgi, free shipping worldwide. The price you see is the price you pay. It goes out the door anywhere in the world. Uh, but heads up though, unless you're like in Asia, you're probably not gonna get these now before Christmas. But I'm still running the free Corgi deal until the end of the, the holiday season. So anyway, um, just heads up on that. Um, aside from that, let's dive on into what you're really for, and that's your questions in the Titman mail call. Dylan Muller writes, what's your opinion on Airsoft YouTubers using clickbait titles such as Airsoft Cheater Gets Caught? Personally, I'm tired of it. <sighs> okay, um, it's tough for us. Uh, and I'm not making excuses for anybody. It's tough. There's a lot of stuff going on, on YouTube. You want to try to get that attention. It's not us trying to get the click. And I say us as in YouTubers. I'm going to just pull us all into one big bundle and speak a little bit on that then speak about me separately. Um, it's a very difficult business out there for us to try to get eyeballs. That thumbnail is so important, the title is so important, and unfortunately the word cheater does, oh wow, cheater, yeah, I deal with cheaters all the time, I'd love to watch this, click. And um, clickbait's a tough one, because clickbait, typically, and it's being used, uh, the, the use of the word has changed a lot lately uh, from what is originally. Clickbait was like, something that you would put on there like you'd get a picture of like some pretty girl in a bikini right and then you click the like oh yeah i want to check this out right you click it and in the video there's no pretty girl in a bikini and you're like what happened to me i got click baited bait you know like you know, like uh, you put bait in a trap the mouse comes in it's like a mouse trap oh cheese eats it you're dead anyway there's it's not a meal right that you think it is but you end up getting killed uh that's what clickbait is like the core reason Yes, I do try to get some titles that might get your attention. I think some YouTubers do it, but I think if you're putting, if the title matches what the content is, it's not necessarily clickbait. It might be a sensationalized title, but the term clickbait has been used now for things like that. Now let me address the cheater thing, because this is different. Um, in my videos, I, I've, I think maybe done one a long, long time ago, but I may have been taking that one down. I try not to do the cheater videos. As much as I've got a ton of footage of people not calling their hits, I, one, I don't want people getting video of me one time going, well, I know I shot him. I mean, sometimes you just don't feel it, right? I mean, we all are there. I don't like calling out cheaters in the field. I think it's a horrible thing to do. So if I'm telling you, don't call out a cheater on the field, just, all right, if you didn't call it, maybe my BB didn't get there, maybe he didn't feel it, maybe he was running, uh, maybe my hop-up was set wrong. There's like a thousand reasons 
of why you bit. Maybe it looked like it went past him, but it like right past his ear, you know, like Matrix style. I mean, these things don't fly extremely fast. You can sometimes dodge them a little bit. Um, I don't like calling out cheaters in the field, so why would I do that on a video? Um, also, for people who aren't into Airsoft, uh, that's the impression they're getting of Airsoft, going, wow, so man, like if I go play Airsoft, everybody I'm gonna play against is probably gonna cheat. So when I go out there and play, it's nothing but cheaters. So what do I do? Like shoot them 20 times instead of once? It's not, it's not something I want to promote for this hobby of ours. I just don't think it's a, a healthy or right thing to do personally. Is it, do they want to do it to get views? That's fine. I, I'm absolutely not judging the other YouTubers out there. I mean, it does work. It absolutely is effective. And I think that's why it continues to happen. Um, and don't get me wrong, I click on them. I want to see like, I want to see that cheater. I want to see like, oh man, yeah, I knew a guy like that. Um, but I know the difference. And I, I, unfortunately, I think that it does bring a bad light potentially to people that are wanting to maybe get into Airsoft. And that's all they see is a bunch of cheater videos out there and going, well, dang, I guess, I guess this is what Airsoft's like. Maybe I shouldn't play. Maybe I should go play like something else, you know, like maybe paintball where there's marking and maybe there's less chance of cheaters or at least then you can visibly see that if you hit somebody like, oh, I'm shooting green paint and he's got a green blob on him. I got him. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. It's very tough. I mean, I do this for a living. Uh, my living is through these guys. That's why I want to do sell design, sell these patches and, and make my money that way. Uh, some people make their money through clicks on YouTube. You know, and, and it's a tough business, you know, to do it that way. I'm not saying what they're doing is right. I'm not saying what they're doing is wrong. I'm just telling you that I will try my best not to do those things. I may mess up or there might be something really good I want to share with you as a lesson. Uh, and I might use that cheater title, but I want to try to do it in the form of a lesson. But I, I want to really try my best not to do that. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of them out there. I, I know what you mean. I'm kind of sick and tired of them too. Um, cheater, 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 big red arrows, cheater busted, cheater caught, cheater caught on camera. Cheater revenge. I, I would love to see it change, but unfortunately, if the tactic works and you're getting clicks and views because of those, it's gonna be really tough to change that, honestly. It's just gonna be part of, of unfortunately, what YouTube is, uh, like it or unfortunately not. Hudson McGath is back again with the burners here. Hey, Jonathan, hot Cheetos or normal Cheetos? Hot Cheetos, but man, in Taiwan, you can't get them. Really, flaming hot Cheetos? Nope. Not here. In fact, the Cheetos that are here, the cheese ones, they're actually like, I don't know, it's something about them. They have a little bit of sweetness to them. There's not quite the same. Like the double cheese would... Anyway, I'm digress. Hot Cheetos all the way. Jack O'Neill SG1 writes, Hey Jonathan, I have a relatively specific question for you. Where do you put your HPA tank when you play with a backpack? Now, he goes on to ask a whole bunch more questions um, and talks about the Tipman. He has, he has a pair of them and doesn't want to use the air stock, which kind of makes it look like a paintball gun, um, this, which is the grip adapter. He's a pretty tall guy, six foot one, and from Germany, so that may limit where he can purchase stuff. He doesn't want to put it in the backpack, too. I, I wanted to kind of shorten There's a lot of questions there, but uh, Jack um, has a very, probably a common issue. You have a backpack, you want to put your stuff in the backpack. Maybe you're playing Milsim. Sometimes you want to dump that pack, which I like to do. Uh, and be able to be mobile and not have to carry like all your extra mags, maybe BBs and grenades and all the stuff that you don't want to have on your body if you're going to do like a rush on a base. So um, there's actually a few pouches out there. Some of the paintball tank specific pouches are not unfortunately that great. Uh, they just can't handle the weight. They tend to flop around. If you read the reviews, I mean, I was going to like recommend a couple of them for you. Even the Tipman one, I was going to go, hey, check this one out. But I started reading the reviews on it and probably not the right fit for you. Um, it's just, it just doesn't seem to, to work. And there seems to be kind of the commonality between a lot of them um, that just, you know, may or may not work depending on the size of the tank. I think like RAP4 and some other companies make it. Anyway, I do have a recommendation for you that I have used in the past and this might work out well. TYR Tactical, Tier Tactical, in the US, they're a tactical gear company. They make like kind of high-end specialty gear. A lot of the stuff sewn to make. I've owned this pouch, actually owned two of these pouches in the past. It's their 50 ounce hydration bladder pouch. They have two different versions. One that mounts vertical. So the 50 ounce hydro bladder, it's small. It's really small, it's like a liter-ish. Like a little bit over a liter, I think. I'm trying to do the conversion, putting ounces in. 50, uh, like almost one and a half liters, 1.75 liters. It's small. It's under two liters, so it's real small hydro bladder. It's designed for that tiny hydro bladder. So the pouch is like that big. 
about the size of your paintball tank. And it kind of like a shell, it's got a great flap that goes over and it kind of, the way the flap works, it keeps everything in there. It's got a little bit of molly on the front, the actual webbing, and then it lashes molly onto your gear and it'll be a snug fit, but your tank should fit unless you've got like a monster, like just a 90 or something. Um, with that in mind, use that. If you have a smaller tank, you can actually put some bungee cords across that molly and sh one of those little, where you lock it down. I'm trying to think if I've got something around here, like not these strings, but the one with the little plastic slider on it. You know, you can slide and let go of the spring and it locks in place. I'm really looking for something. Nope, don't have it. <laughs> I was gonna give you like, it's like I have a neck uh, uh, thing that has it on there. Anyway, that could work too um, for a pouch. Check the measurements, check the dimensions. It should work out pretty good. They also have a 100 ounce uh, one's twice as big, but it's vertical. So if you have like a longer tank, should fit in there. Check the dim uh, dimensions of that. TYR has some very unique solutions, um, but that 50 ounce can go on your cummerbund like that and not have to be on your back. And that's the cool part. And they have a high, they have a vertical mount one and they also have one that's stitched with the, the mallet mounts for horizontal mounting. So if you're on your tank laterally instead of vertically. So that's pretty cool too. Check that out. It really depends on your tank size, but look at it. I'll have a link below and I think they're like 35 US. We're not talking about a lot of money for a very specific pouch for high-end use. Um, I think Cry has a GP pouch as well, but they're gonna be a, probably a bit more expensive on that one. But I think the TYR one is going to be a really darn good option for you if you can track them down. You might even be able to find used ones. I don't think anybody makes any replicas, but uh, I've, I've had the TYR, I've had it in two different colors. Fantastic pouch. Uh, give that one a look if you're looking for something to mount on the side, not get in the way of your backpack, and still be something very secure to hold your tank. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from someone I met this weekend at MOA show. This is Ghost Airsoft. He is a local Taiwanese player, almost 4,000 subs, like a hair under. Let's get him over. Um, does play locally, does um, some commentary and things like that. Uh, it is all in Mandarin. So if you want to understand what he's saying, uh, start practicing. <laughs> Mine's very rusty, I can get a little bit. Um, but it's not about that, it's gameplay. So it transcends all languages. He's actually playing at Linko, which is actually one of the fields here, not too far. I've not had a chance to play yet, but uh, the group of buddies that I play with here in Taiwan do play there often. In fact, it was a couple weeks ago, I missed a chance. It's Linko uh, CQB, um, I think it's like CQB Challenge, CQB City, CQB Club. CQB Club, there you go, get the brain going here. Um, and it's kind of like a training facility. And it's also used for airsoft when they're not using like training for law enforcement, military and stuff like that. So anyway, check it out. You guys get to see a field that's local to me. And maybe, 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 maybe I'll come out and do some videos there. The videos with uh, this guy here uh, are coming from a different field, Action Bunker here, uh, which is in Taipei. Linko is uh, closer to the west, closer to the airport, uh, the west of Taipei City where I live. Um, but yeah, definitely cool guy. Really awesome dude, got a chance to meet him. Uh, his gimmick's got kind of the mask thing going on. Uh, he covers his face up and all that. Uh, good play, good stuff. I, I definitely think he plays fast. He was kind of helping some guys move up on this one. He kind of knew the angles, like pre-firing some stuff, you know, but using also GBB. So guess what, like pistol and a GBB vector, which you don't really see much of anymore. Uh, the GBB vectors and things like that. And I think he's got like the Helix front hand grip on it. You guys know Helix Airsoft's got that cool front grip, extended rail. I think it's got the Helix rail in it too. So really cool looking thing. It's got painted white and black. Worth it to watch just for that. But if you guys like what you see, which I did, I mashed the sub button. If you guys like it too, mash the sub button and let him know uh, I sent you. You probably don't need to translate. He actually spoke a little decent English, so I think he can read English just fine. Anyway, guys, check it out. As always, I have a link in the description below, and it popped up sometime over here in the corner for you guys. And if you have a channel of your own or one you love to watch, please, please, please share it in the comment section below. I love to learn about all new channels and share them here on this show to help grow this hobby and sport for all of us that are doing airsoft out there, especially the YouTubers, so we can all see more airsoft from around the world, whether it be here or your home country. Well, anyway, that's it. Thank you so much, as always, uh, for coming here, hanging out, and uh, being a part of the show. Thank you for asking some great questions, and thank you for helping each other down there in the question section. If you guys didn't get your question answered this week, please be persistent. Uh, I wish I could answer them all, but the show can only be so long. Anyway, until next week, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, watch my MOA show coverage and call your freaking hits.